So if you have thumb jam, and um, you know, well, I just have right here um, just a, it, a, a, one, a one sound. So if you want to change the sound, you go up. Um, it depends on how you're holding it. Um, it'll either look like this if you're holding it in, in portrait mode, or it'll look like this if you're holding it in landscape mode. Some apps, you can only hold it, it only work in, in one port, in one uh, mode. But this one works in both. So you go up to where it says sound, it, it'll be in the upper left hand corner. And you can change the instrument, so we can do that first. Uh, Toby, the student who was playing, was, was playing a, uh, a guitar. Let, let's see what, uh, electric, he was playing the electric guitar sound, right? It was slightly modified for him so that you noticed he was shaking it to create vibrato. So, um, I, you know, you're right. I think you can do that or you can do it with your finger. Um, there's different ways to get in there and, and control um, the different parameters, whether you can control them by shaking or moving your finger or different parts. See, like on this one, it gets louder as I go from, from left to right. Um, but also, uh, two of the most important things to know are the octave and the span. So you can change the octave lower or higher just by pressing those plus or minus signs there uh, where it says octave. All right? And when I press span, I'm going to decrease the span. See what happens there? <laughs> So that, that's the greatest, the most powerful thing for, for my students when I want them to play because, you know, instead of having such a cluttered screen and such a fine margin of error if they have to touch the right note or not, this, this helps. The span uh, over here. Span plus or minus. So the span is uh, lower, lowering the span decreases the range. So it, in, as a result, each one of these gets wider and, and easier to play. And, and here's the other really important thing. Over here with the sharp and flat, that just means, well, what key? Right? So you can pick the key. So I, I just I want whatever key I want, I can, I can choose here. And it changes everything automatically, but it keeps, it keeps the span, it keeps the scale the same. Let me explain the scale to you quickly. Change scale. OK, so if you guys know all these scales, well, you're a lot better than me. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I mean, I, I guess your reaction says it all. You have a, an incredible amount of choices, but this is the way I use it. I mean, I, I do pick some of these scales sometimes. And over on the side, instead of scale, there's different categories. And you can even pick, instead of scales, just chords right here. You know, and they'll give you a, a lot of different chords, some fairly advanced chords. But what I'd love to show you is, on the bottom, all right, well, you can't quite see it on the screen, but it's at the very bottom of this window on the right-hand corner. Actually, you can barely see it. It says, it says new. <laughs> so, um, so now you can see where it says new. So if I just tap on that, well, here I can, uh, well, I mean, I can even do, I, I don't usually mess with this, but we can do different temperaments and we can fine tune, you know, just like detune something a little bit. But there's other ways to do that in the app, too. You can add chorus and so on. So, but what I, what I love to do, let's say I have a student, um, and this is important. It's important to make note of, of this, is that you, I'm arranging the music for my students, OK? But it's almost like if my students were instruments of an orchestra, and maybe I got one student who is like the tuba. So I'm not going to give that student lots of fast notes to play. I'm going to give him a simple boom, 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 boom. 
Okay, you understand what I'm saying? So the concepts that you would use that most of you I'm sure already are familiar with in terms of arranging for a band or for an orchestra, those are the same concepts once you assess your students and you know where everyone is, those are the concepts you use to assign instruments. I mean, I mean that's how I work. Of course, there are other ways, and the, the band you saw, they're kind of all advanced. I could assign pretty much any of them, almost anything. You could do it like but, the facility also then, right? Well, that, that's a, a great point. That kind of gets into something else. Um, yes and no. You know, um, it depends. I've, I've worked with students that have CP, and so they're, you know, because they don't have much muscle control, uh, there's certain way that I set up apps for, for them and certain parts that I can assign to them. But yeah, yes, yes and no. Um, I, I don't ever like to pigeonhole based on, necessarily based on a disability. Um, this is more about uh, accessing ability, accessibility. Okay, the, the abilities are always there. Just have to find them. So back to this exciting thing here. So the bass player that I, I mentioned, well, this one student, I think he can play some bass lines. So I'm going to get rid of all of this. See what I'm doing? If, if the little light is on, that means it's already part of the scale. Um, but so I can tap and turn them off. And I'm going to tap them. I'm going to tap all of them except the, the root and the fifth. All right? So tap on the fourth. It's gone. Tap on the tritone. Sorry to lose your tritone, but you're gone. Minor seventh, you're gone. So now, so now we have no sound. Yeah, I don't know why my sound is cutting out. Okay, but you get the idea. I believe that in in a new version of this, uh, you can you can uh, change the coloring a, a little more. It's a bit limited in the coloring, but. It, in a sense, it doesn't really matter. I've never had a student who can't, um, you know, discern the difference in colors between one note and another. Okay, and so we have, you know, we have some students that navigate rhythm beautifully, but their pattern recognition isn't so good. So I can maybe keep that students on, on a more simple part in terms of. Uh, harmony or melody, but I can give them some cool rhythmic stuff to do. Maybe I'll give them a percussion instrument, or if I give them an iPad, I can have them play, you know, a fairly inter intricate bass line, and they'll be really rock solid with it, and that'll kind of propel everyone else. As you know, that's how it works. So, uh, I'm, I'm going to spend, I'm spending a little extra time on Thumb Jam because it's, it's really such a powerful app. Is everyone pretty much with me so far? OK, awesome. Good. Good for you. So the next, and this is, you, you noticed um, when the students were doing their free improvisation, it wasn't just this. I'm going to tap this now and show you what, what I did for their iPads. So at the time when, when we recorded that, you could only split it into two sections. So now they, they, keep, they keep updating this app. It's really a phenomenal app. But so I'm going to just show you the two splits now and what it looks like. OK, so um, see, and once you have splits, then these come into play. So you can have multiple instru instruments to choose from. So I'm going to keep the electric guitar, and I'm going to use, uh, I'm just going to select another electric guitar. All right, wait. All right. So now I can do some edits. S notice over here, if you're holding it in, in, uh, in portrait mode, this kind of highlight, do you see how that changes on the side? Yeah. So that'll be on top if you're holding it in portrait mode. All right. So you need to tap on the part of the screen that we, we have it divided into two parts, yes? So you need to tap on the part of the screen that you want to modify or that you want to edit. So I'm going to bring this part down to the same octave. Um, OK, good. And here's what I'm going to do now. Instead of playing this, this uh, 
This top side is in E. So I'm going to just change the scale very simply and make it A. OK? Um, and I'm also going to bring that span back down. Um, it, cha it changed scale, but, but that's OK. We can, um, we can put it back. OK? So now simply by switching from one side to the other, well, you have a, a chord progression. You got two chords that can be used in so many, many different songs. So, and don't forget, you can do the same thing four times. So you can have four chords. And this doesn't have to be a bass line. It could be a melody. It could be chords. You could have a student uh, like, you could have a student who can maybe uh, navigate yeah, it, something like this, right? Right? By just playing the three chords, the three notes of that chord there. All right, and again, so you can, you can include four, as many as four chords, and this is just in thumb jam. <laughs> so, um, I think we'll move on to another app, but this is uh, just something I want to show you because um, it's on the latest update of Thumb Jam. Um, I keep saying how awesome Thumb Jam is. There's a reason. They keep making these updates. And so now their latest upgrade, amongst other things, is this. Um, I didn't upgrade it on all the iPads. I think if you have number 17, that's the only one I upgraded for. Um, so you'll, if, uh, you'll see that if you have iPad number 17, the numbers, I keep the numbers on the back of the iPad. Um, so you'll see that there. So that's an arpeggiator. Uh, <laughs> so, so now you can get a student holding, just holding those few chords and you know, creating arpeggiated patterns. And that can sync up tempo-wise with all the other uh, <coughs> iPads and the apps that are being used in, with those as well. It's, it's just endless. You could, I mean, we could go deeply into this for hours and hours and still not even really scratch the surface of all that you can do. But you see that even just this little basic thing in the half hour or so that I've been uh, here with you, you already see the, the possibilities, I hope, and the potential to provide more musical, quality music making experience for, for your students. I don't know if you can save, do you save this? Is there a way to save what you great, need? Great, great question. An important question, absolutely. So under edit, just tap edit, and you can save the preset. But there's, there's two different ways to save, as, as a new preset or as a multi. Because there's two of these, it re, if you notice, remember before I said, well, well, there's an electric guitar and I'm going to make another electric guitar. So is, whenever there's more than one instrument, it becomes a multi, all right? If you save a multi as a new pre preset, you're going to lose all your instruments but one. Once you save something, if you go into sound, change instrument, you have the user instruments. And that, those are all the ones that you've saved, OK? So if you save an instrument, it's always going to be right on top in the user section. OK. Let's move on to, uh, someone asked a question about GarageBand. We could spend hours just it diving into GarageBand, another app that they keep updating. And, and there's more and more cool, amazing things that you can do with it. So um, OK. And I don't even play guitar. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, just, just a basic thing like that. Um, you, can find, uh, yeah, uh, you can find little melodic patterns. All right. So this is, this will be the first screen you see if you haven't selected a song. If you select a song, it doesn't matter any song. Um, if you want to go back to that original screen, you just go to My Songs. Okay. 
The only, I'll, I'll have to admit, and you know, you guys seem really great. You're, you're with it, you're following me, that's awesome. If you're not following me, get, just ask, ask questions or, or reach out to me later. But even though you guys don't seem to have a problem, I realize that f even for me, even though I'm used to this, my one thing that frustrates me is the fact that even though all these apps are great, they, they're all a little different. You know, they all work a little differently. Some of them, are, well, all of them have certain similarities, but in order to go deeper and really start to modify, you really kind of have to know your app, know each app. Um, and I generally mostly use, you know, because of that, just five or six apps that I know are really powerful. Okay, if I want to use a different app, it's not that hard to learn it, but there's always like, you know, you kind of have to look around for a while, but that's all it is. Uh, I, I'm a little impatient. I want to just like do this right away. Um, and especially if my students are with me in the room, I don't want to kind of fidget around with apps uh, or, or how to modify apps. But that's why I, I know certain apps like Thumb Jam or GarageBand or one or two of the others that I show you. Uh, that I will show you. I use them all the time, and so I know my way around. Um, the same thing will apply to you guys once you get more and more experience. So if I tap on my songs, that's how I get to the, you know, to the main library of, of all the songs. And the, the, the plus sign um, means that you can start a new song. And when you tap the plus sign, you'll go into the area where the first thing they prompt you to do is select an instrument. All right? So actually, I'll do that now with you guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press uh, the plus sign. I'm going to ask to create a new song. And there we go, instruments. There's the smart guitar that you just asked about. There's uh, this awesome new feature called the drummer. Keep swiping. Um, <coughs> You saw my student play the drums, so just to show you the drums. Okay. So yeah, that, yeah, that's right. It's a it's a great visual. Okay. There's different drum sets you can pick, but um, outside of just kind of having fun exploring the app, let me take you into a little bit of a dive into, again, using these apps in a very powerful way with, with your students. And by the way, you know, I, I really don't believe that iPads are only for special needs students. Um, there's a guy, I don't know if anyone who knows who Jordan Rudis is. <laughs> yeah. Jordan Rudis, like the, one of the greatest pianists on the planet. Jordan Rudis is the pianist for Dream Theater. He actually makes his own iOS apps and he, he, he markets them. Um, he also plays iPads in concert all the time, in addition to his keyboard. So, you know, I don't, you think, know, I've seen, I don't, don't think I've seen a live band in the last like I'd say 50% of the live bands that I've seen in the last like three or four years have had a computer or an iPad. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's it's just the way things are going. Musicians are always early adapters. They're always the first people to start taking this technology and using it to create music. So the iPad. The iPad is no different.